Okay, so Drew asked us to go through every single round, talk about our best values. I'm sorry, we already talked about this. I can't do that, okay? That's so surface level, and I wouldn't have nearly enough time to dive into every single one of these players. So instead, I'm going to be turning this into an entire series. I'm going to be going through and looking at the best wide receiver values in the early rounds here. That way, I have an adequate amount of time. I'm able to dive in depth with every one of these players and really give you the pros, the cons, and why I think it's worth the opportunity cost to take them into your fantasy football drafts this season. But before we get into some of my favorite players, my most drafted players so far this year, please go down there, drop a like in the video if you have not done so already. Subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football, even though I know you're already subscribed. And that should be it. Let's go ahead. Let's dive into it. Whew. Now, I know we have been talking about this guy over and over and over again. I can't shut up. Y'all know we do those live streams every single day on this channel, and you see me drafting them every single day. Deontay Johnson. Oh, okay, here with Deontay Johnson. This is a wide receiver that checks everything that we look for. I mean, if we are talking about what translates season to season, um, it is your yards per route run. It is your target share in your offense. It's your raw targets per game. It's your raw fantasy points per game. And what doesn't translate? Oh, your touchdown rate. Your touchdown rate will go up and down. And yes, that will heavily fluctuate your fantasy football points as well, given how important touchdowns are in fantasy football. But it's so hard to predict outside of the elite guys like Devontae Adams, Mike Evans. We know they're going to have incredible touchdown rates. But outside of that, we really shouldn't try to project those whatsoever. And here with Deontay Johnson. What? Is he elite at? Okay, he is elite with his target share. He is elite with his targets per game. He's pretty damn good with his yards per route run. He checks every box that we look for from a wide receiver. And this is a wide receiver that's pretty damn young as well. He was in the same draft class as AJ Brown, DK Metcalf. He's still on his rookie contract. And right now, if we head over to Underdog Fantasy, y'all have seen this time and time again. Y'all have seen where we are drafting this guy. He is going in the middle of round four. Deontay Johnson is a wide receiver on his rookie contract that last season was the wide receiver seven on a points per game standpoint. The wide receiver seven on a points per game standpoint. And now you're getting him as a mid to low end wide receiver too. Now, what would have to happen for this to make sense? Um, you probably need a completely different outlook on the overall offense. But yeah, that's there. You no longer have Ben Roethlisberger. And I understand with no Ben Roethlisberger, with Trubisky, with Kenny Pickett coming in, a lot of people are worried because Trubisky was a train wreck with Matt Nagy. And on top of this, Kenny Pickett, he was a fine prospect, but it's not like Kenny Pickett is coming in and has the same backers that a Trevor Lawrence did. He doesn't have that level of excitement. So people are worried that Deontay Johnson will have bad quarterback play this upcoming season with the... Hall of Fame, Ben Roethlisberger retiring. And if that were to be the case, if Deontay Johnson last year finished as a mid-wide receiver one because he was getting Hall of Fame level quarterback play, oh, I agree with you. I would expect some serious regression from Deontay Johnson. I would expect Deontay Johnson, his overall efficiency to take a massive tip down. But Ben Roethlisberger was 39 years old. Ben Roethlisberger was very bad last year. He could not push the ball down the field whatsoever. This caused a very low average depth of target for the entire offense. And if you look at Ben Roethlisberger with how bad he was, the only quarterbacks that were worse from an adjusted yards per pass attempt standpoint, Sam Darnold, Trevor Lawrence, Jacoby Brissett, Zach Wilson, Andy Dalton, Justin Fields. If we remove the rookies from that, because you're expecting those rookie quarterbacks to struggle, Andy Dalton, Jacoby Brissett, and Sam Darnold. That is the bucket that Ben Roethlisberger was in. Okay, so let's not look at this and go, okay, yeah, he's probably going to have bad quarterback play this upcoming season. A, we don't know that. And B, what we do know is he had a horrible quarterback play last year. And now there could be one other thing that would make sense 
on why Deontay Johnson is so much cheaper in fantasy drafts this season on where he was being drafted last year. And that's increased target competition. You have Chase Claypool going into year three. This team actually went out there and invested in the wide receiver position as well. They went out and they drafted George Pickens in the second round. A lot of people are excited about George Pickens. They went out there and they drafted another wide receiver on day three in Calvin. He's just a field stretching wide receiver, not really going to be a threat at all. But still, let's at least look at that. They bring in target competition. You possibly have a bad quarterback as well. But my counterpoint to that would be, have you looked at the depth chart for the Pittsburgh Steelers? This Pittsburgh Steelers offense, they needed, they needed to bring in help in the NFL draft because obviously they lose Juju Smith-Schuster, Juju going to Kansas City. That is going to be on everybody's radar. But you also have James Washington going over to Dallas. James Washington was a very important wide receiver for this Pittsburgh Steelers team. If we look at last year, James Washington ran 315 routes, okay? That's a lot. That's 315 routes that are no longer available. And if we look at one other wide receiver that played every single down, Ray Ray McLeod, he ran 314 routes himself. Ray Ray McLeod also going over to San Francisco. So you're looking at Juju, Ray Ray McLeod, and James Washington, almost leaving 1,000 routes run behind. Now, yes, they go draft George Piggins, but what were they supposed to do? The other wide receivers on this depth chart at the time of this recording, Miles Boykin, back in the day, had some upside, but obviously Miles Boykin's nothing. Cody White. Calvin Austin, who they just drafted, a field stretching wide receiver. Tyler Sneed, Tyler Vaughn, n- names I haven't heard of. They had to bring in depth at the receiver position. Deontay Johnson's still going to be an elite target. The only wide receivers to post a target share as high as Deontay Johnson last season were Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson, and a wide receiver we'll be talking about at the end of this video in DJ Moore. Now, this next wide receiver we are going to talk about, yes, we have spent the entire offseason talking about him at least it seems like we have Jalen Waddle with Jalen Waddle here yes we're going to hit on these same exact talking points that we have you know historically if you have an elite breakout from a rookie wide receiver where are they then being drafted hell we're seeing that right now with Jamar Chase now no I can't say that Jalen Waddles is as good as Jamar Chase we saw it last year with Justin Jefferson no I can't say that Jalen Waddles is as good as Justin Jefferson I, of course I can't do that but Historically speaking, when you have those elite breakouts as rookies, people naturally assume that you are going to get that year two jump from the young player who impressed early on his day one, day one appearance in the NFL. And with Waddle right now, people are not expecting that. With Jalen Waddle, he finished as the wide receiver 13. However, on underdog fantasy right now, he's going as a mid wide receiver two. He is going in the fourth round. So on underdog fantasy, people are expecting Jalen Waddle to get worse going into year two. Now, of course, if you are not drafting on underdog fantasy, you know, I have to tell you to go fix your life. Go draft on underdog fantasy. We draft there every single day. I've almost drafted 200 teams there this off season. In my opinion, the most fun place that you can have your fantasy football drafts and on underdog fantasy when you make your first deposit with promo code flock you'll be able to a get into drafts with us in the live stream b probably more importantly you'll be able to have some fun get into drafts in the public lobby get a 100 deposit bonus get our 2022 rankings get our dynasty rankings support this channel make sure you go take advantage of that with the link in the description But going back to Jalen Waddell, drafters on underdog are expecting him to regress from where he was his first season. And with Waddell, did he have the predictive measures that we look for? Did Jalen Waddell get the majority of his fantasy production his rookie season based off of volume, 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 like what we want? Or was he a Chase Claypool? Did he have a touchdown rate close to 11% that we can assume is going to come down year two? And maybe that's going to plateau his production overall. No, Jalen Waddle was elite in terms of his volume. He averaged almost nine targets a game. He had a target share almost 25%. The touchdown rate was actually a little bit lowered. He actually averaged 
only 0.37 touchdowns per game. That's good for about a 4.5% touchdown rate. That's a number that has space to come up, especially if we assume that the yards per route run, the overall efficiency in this offense is elevated with the new coaching staff, as well as the presence of Tyree Kill. Now, I understand, and I will be the first person to admit it, that Tyree Kill coming over negatively impacts Jalen Waddle from a real life NFL standpoint. Oh, it's fantastic. The speed that Tyree kill will provide will just allow so much more space for Jalen Waddle to operate in crossing routes to just have less defensive attention overall, but the target share is going to get capped off. The volume will come down. Yes. The efficiency will come up just slightly, but still Tyree kill will eat too much for it to help Jalen Waddle. However, this doesn't mean that Jalen Waddle is going to get worse this upcoming season, because if we look at the path that he has been on so far, and we look at rookie wide receivers that were able to average seven and a half targets a game, that's where Jalen Waddle was. He actually averaged almost an entire target per game more than that. And we look at wide receivers that had 63 receiving yards per game. And that's where Jalen Waddle was. You had Odell Beckham Jr., Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Julio Jones, AJ Green, Mike Evans, and Amari Cooper. All of whom people projected to be elite level wide receivers in year two. Guys, almost every single one of those players was being drafted as a wide receiver one their second season. So yes, it's a bad situation for Jalen Waddell but that is already baked into his price whenever you're seeing on underdog fantasy him consistently go as a fourth round selection as a wide receiver too. If I don't draft Jalen Waddle, I'm probably drafting Deontay Johnson. If I don't draft Deontay Johnson, I'm probably drafting Jalen Waddle unless there's one other wide receiver available. Let's go over to that next guy. This next player is DJ Moore. And I understand a lot of people are probably saying, okay, Mason, um, all these guys go in the same range. All these guys go at the beginning of the fourth round. How would you rank them? I would personally go Waddle one, DJ Moore two, and then I would go Deontay Johnson last, but it's not because I don't like Deontay Johnson. I love the man, but you're also getting Deontay Johnson sliding a little bit further in some other drafts. Now I will say with DJ Moore, this is a wide receiver that if, Sam Darnold is his actual starting quarterback by the time we get to week one. He's not going to be a league winner for you. He, he actually will probably disappoint just slightly. Okay, I, I will admit that because if you look at DJ Moore, this is a wide receiver that has not been able to break out as a wide receiver one in fantasy yet. Yeah, back in 2019, his second year, he was the wide receiver 16 on a per game basis. But what has held DJ Moore back so far is a laughably low touchdown rate. He has averaged less than a 3% touchdown rate over the past three years. And while yes, we know that touchdown rate fluctuates up and down, up and down, up and down. And it's something that we can mainly ignore. There's one thing that strongly correlates to a wide receiver's touchdown rate. That is the passing efficiency of the quarterback that they are playing with. Because if that quarterback is very good, they're going to have trips to the red zone. They are going to score touchdowns and the wide receiver will benefit. I mean, that's how you get Devontae Adams just with an absurd touchdown rate paired up with Aaron Rodgers over the past three seasons. So with DJ Moore, if his quarterback is Sam Darnold, yeah, it's going to be another tough season with his touchdowns yet again, as we've seen with him over the past four years dealing with Cam Newton with his shoulder falling off, Taylor Heineke, Kyle Allen, Will Greer, Teddy Bridgewater, PJ Walker, Sam Darnold. That has been the quarterback rotation for DJ Moore so far in his NFL. That, that is criminal. I feel bad for the man. We need to find his address. We need to send him a gift basket. Say, man, I am sorry. I hope, I hope that Baker Mayfield or Jimmy Garoppolo is your starting quarterback this upcoming season. And if that were to happen, I think DJ Moore could unlock some upside because with Baker Mayfield or Jimmy Garoppolo, I will say that it would probably be the best quarterback play that DJ Moore has ever seen in his entire NFL career, which I understand that sounds laughable to say because he had Cam Newton, but Cam Newton during those seasons was atrocious. If we combine every quarterback start for DJ Moore since he came into the league, his quarterbacks have averaged 6.05 adjusted yards per pass attempt. That would have been a bottom five quarterback this past season in the NFL. So DJ Moore has averaged bottom five quarterback play overall. Prime Cam Newton, way better than Baker Mayfield or Jimmy Garoppolo could ever dream to be. But at this point, I think Baker would be the best QB 
that he's ever played with. And you're looking at a wide receiver that's been a target hog. Like everybody we're talking about in this video, you are noticing a trend. I'm chasing volume, 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 volume with the potential that, hell, maybe the quarterback's not as bad as projected in this offense. And with DJ Moore, if we go look at how impressive he has been from a volume standpoint, if we look at wide receivers since the year 2010 that managed to have a market share number of 29% or higher that were 24 years old or younger, Odell Beckham Jr., DeAndre Hopkins, Justin Jefferson, A.J. Green, Mike Evans did it twice, Jarvis Landry, and D.J. Moore. Like DJ Moore is that target hog. What we need is we need an improvement with the quarterback play overall. If that improvement comes with the quarterback play overall, and we see the touchdown rate go up from being two and a half percent to seven percent, if it's just league average, all of a sudden DJ Moore is the top 12 wide receiver and you're getting him as a wide receiver too. So if you think Carolina rolls into the season with Sam Darnold, don't draft DJ Moore. Don't do it. It, it won't be worth it. He'll be a low and wide receiver too. But if they make a play for a quarterback, I think you have upside for DJ Moore to almost skyrocket in ADP. And I refuse, I refuse to believe I live in a world where Drew Locke and Sam Darnold are going to be NFL starters week one and Baker Mayfield and Jimmy Garoppolo are going to be on the bench. Now let's go to our last wide receiver. This is going to be someone that obviously is in a completely different price point, a completely different range. Let's go over to Stefan Diggs. Here with Stefan Diggs, you're not getting to take him in the fourth round. It's never, yes, you have to pay the price tag of a late first, early second, dependent on the league that you're in. But in those underdog drafts, I'm taking Stefan Diggs as early as pick six. And I know that sounds crazy. Trust me, I get it. But if we go back and we look at Stefan Diggs with the yards per route run in 2020, in 2019, we see that Stefan Diggs has an absurd ceiling, 2.7 yards per route run. I mean, the only wide receivers that are able to get there over the past three years, you have A.J. Brown, you have Devontae Adams, and that's about it. And if we're looking at those two wide receivers, A.J. Brown, we can't really be that excited about this year because he's having to deal with Jalen Hurts. He has target competition of <sighs> Devonta Smith, Dallas Goddard. That's more than he's ever seen. And if we're looking at Devontae Adams, I mean, that yards per target's not really that predicted because now you're looking at Devontae Adams with more target competition than he's ever seen with the combination of Darren Waller as well as Hunter Renfro and the worst quarterback play he's ever seen. I like Derek Carr, but Derek Carr is not Aaron Rodgers. Now with Stefan Dix, you get the best of both worlds. You have almost no target competition at all. I am not a believer in Gabriel Davis. I know Gabriel Davis right now on underdogs going as a top 24 wide receiver. I can't buy that Gabriel Davis is a top 24 wide receiver. He was outplayed by freaking Emmanuel Sanders at 34 years old. Prime Emmanuel Sanders, very similar to Ben Roethlisberger, very similar to Cam Newton. I know I sound like I'm disrespecting these great players but we're not talking about them in their prime. Manuel Sanders is prime. Fantastic. Hell yeah. Of course I understand why you're parked behind him. When he's 34 years old. No, I, I don't get it. I, I don't understand that. And here with Stefan Dix, if we can assume that he jumps up to being a player that has almost a Cooper Cup level target share with the departure, oh, with the departure of 184 targets from this offense, you are going to get the best of both worlds and that he has the elite talent demonstrated by guys like Devontae Adams, A.J. Brown, but that's combined with elite quarterback play and a lack of competition for targets. I think that Stefan Diggs 100% has it in the range of outcomes to be Devontae Adams from 2018, 2019, 2020, 20. Obviously, Devontae Adams has been historic and that's going to be Stefan Diggs this upcoming season. We should see a bump up with his overall role and if you're playing in this Buffalo offense, that's top five in pace of play. That's also top five in pass rate over expectation. With an elite level quarterback in Josh Allen, that is how you unlock truly elite level upside. I mean, y'all know also in round two, we're able to get running backs like Saquon Barkley. In round three, we can get a Nick Chubb. So I'm completely comfortable drafting Stefan Diggs in round one and letting that other running back value fall to us. But thank you again for being a part of the flock sport in this channel. If you have not done so already, go down there, drop that like, subscribe. And yeah, all I got to say is thank you. I appreciate you and I hope you have a great day.